quarter inch jack, magnet, playability, telecast, narrow neck, on access, off access, amp attenuator, fans amp distortion, <laughs> memory man. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Yusuf. Welcome to part five of the how to record music, how to produce music tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to record electric guitar, different methods to get different tones, ideas, show you how I do it, and give some tips and suggestions for you. Recording electric guitar is much easier than recording acoustic guitar. I mentioned that back in part two where we recorded acoustic guitar because you're recording acoustic guitar using a microphone. When you're using electric guitar, you're not recording using a microphone. You're actually plugging in a quarter inch jack and you're actually, the way it records, these magnets are picking up the vibration of the string and turning them into electronic energy. And then that's going through signal processing such as amplifiers or pedal boards. And that's how you're recording electric guitar. So for that reason, you're not on a mic when you're recording electric guitar. It's a lot easier. It's kind of like recording bass or recording keyboard. You can have the instrument be on the speakers, and we'll do that in a second, and I'll track some electric guitar. There's three main ways to record electric guitar. You can record using an amplifier. You can record direct using a pedal board or an amp simulator. And you can record directly into your computer with a direct input box, which I've showed you before in the bass and keyboard tutorials. And you can use the processing inside the computer to create the tone. Uh, see, if you plug a guitar directly into an interface, whether it be a mixer, analog mixer, or whether it be a digital system directly into Pro Tools, however you do it, you're going to get a really bad sound. And I kind of went over that in this video, uh, how to reamp guitars, where I showed you a DI signal and how to reamp things. But really, when you're recording electric guitar, you want to get a good signal up front. You cannot just plug in, similar to bass, especially with electric guitar, you can't just plug into a system and start playing. You can do that by using a VST uh, plug-in inside the computer, which I don't recommend. So basically you would be recording a direct signal of whatever you played, and then the computer would be applying the processing to make it sound like an amplifier. I don't recommend that. It works for some people, but I have not gotten great results with that. There are many amp simulator plugins for Pro Tools and so forth out there. I don't use any of them. I recommend either doing it analog through pedals, amp simulation, or, which is how I do it, or uh, through actual guitar amps in the room. And I'll show you how to do both of those. Before we do that, let me just say one thing about electric guitars. There are many types and styles of bodies and all kinds of knobs and fiddly things. It's not that important. Honestly, it matters much less than it does an acoustic guitar. The body of the electric guitar doesn't affect the sound that much. It does a bit, of course, but what really makes the difference is playability. So how well the neck is set up and, and how good it feels to the player. And these magnets, that because that's what's picking up the sound. And you see in this Telecaster, I've actually swapped the electronics that came with it, which are fine. And I've replaced them with Seymour Duncan electronics uh, for a fatter kind of sound. The electronics you'll find really make much more of a difference. It's an electric guitar, of course. I would highly recommend a cheap instrument with great electronics over a great instrument with cheap electronics. It's going to sound better when you record and when you perform live. A great instrument with great electronics like this one is the best of both worlds. It's more of a stylistic choice, the body and the type of guitar and the, the look. Some have bigger necks that are wider, some have more narrow necks, some have the distance between frets is wider, some are narrower like on a Gibson. These frets would be closer together, so it would make it easier to play lead guitar. Lead guitarists might tend toward frets that are really pulled close together, whereas if you're playing more rhythm, like what I play, you might tend toward a Strat or a Tele. See, I do play these guitars. They don't just hang on the wall. <laughs> this is Strat. <laughs> I'll just show you where you would place the mics if you were recording an electric guitar. I don't actually have an electric guitar amp because, honestly, I got sick of them. They're huge. They're expensive to maintain. They're heavy. They're hard to haul around for gigs. So I, I have gone the route of recording directly, exclusively through my pedal board, which we'll show you in a second how I do that. But for those of you that do want to record your amp, number one is your room considerations, with, which I've talked about ad nauseum in these tutorials. So check back in the previous videos if you want some more explanation of room acoustics. If I was to mic this amp, I would highly recommend using an SM57 for this. That, that's the sound of electric guitar amps with mics. You hear it on everything, ACDC to Rolling Stones and everything. 
but they have what's called on access. So the speaker, let's say the speaker's right here. I'm pointing the mic directly at the speaker cone. That's one way to do it. And you want to get kind of close. Then they have what's called off access. So you're doing it at a 45 degree angle and that gives you kind of a, a more of a skewed sound. Uh, you can combine two. I wouldn't recommend 257s. I would recommend a condenser mic uh, for this application, but I, this is just what I have on hand. You can have one on access pointing right at the speaker and one off access. Play with the mic placement as the guitarist plays the sound. You move one mic this way, maybe move it like that. You, you know, I kind of showed you when I showed you how to record acoustic guitar. Another way to do it is to get a, a distance mic so you can pull the mic way, way back and that's going to give you a room sound. If you're in a huge room and it's got great acoustics, you know, consider putting it maybe 10 feet. You could put the mic way back there in the middle of the room. The thing about recording an amp in the room is that generally you have to crank the amplifier really, really loud to get a great tone. That's how most amplifiers are designed because you're actually overdriving the tube circuitry physically. I, I wouldn't recommend solid state amps at all for this application. Stick with tube amps exclusively. And so if you're using a tube amp and going to record a tube amp, you're, you actually are degrading the tube when, when you overdrive it. And the more you push that tube, the better the sound is going to be. That's really hard in most home applications and it can get really annoying for your neighbors and wife and whoever, your, your dog. <laughs> they have things called amp attenuators which basically lets you get that same kind of tone but have it at a lower volume. That's another expense. That's another thing that can go wrong. That's more circuitry. That's more cables. I prefer to run everything through my pedal board. Rather than do an amp simulator inside the computer and rather than do a real amp with mics in a room where I have to crank the hell out of the thing, I use Sans Amp G2 and you see I have two. So that's kind of like having two amps for me. Each one has three different amp settings. You see, I have California, British, and Tweed. The California simulates the Mesa boogie, the British simulates a Marshall kind of sound, and the Tweed simulates kind of a Fender. They have off access, center, classic, the mic positioning that I just kind of showed you. And you can make it, you know, clean or heavy gain or even heavier extreme gain. So you can tweak the low, you can tweak the high, you have a level, and you have a uh, drive, which is your distortion. So this is your volume, this is your your gain. A lot of guitarists carry one in their back pocket in case the amp blows out. You can just plug directly in. I just got sick of carrying the amps around and said, hey, this is a lot lighter. Even this pedal board is lighter than most amps. <laughs> These record very well. They play very well live. There are many other kind of amp simulator analog pedals, but I highly recommend getting that you can't just plug into a distortion pedal like a blues driver or an overdrive. It won't sound right. You have to have an amp simulator alongside of it. That's your amp sound. Then these just give me different kind of colors of distortion. So that would give me more of a bluesy kind of distortion and, and that would give me more of a modern kind of sounding distortion. The good thing about using this setup is it gets rid of the amp, it gets rid of the heavy speakers and all that stuff. And you can build a pedal board out so you can add more effects than you could get on board of an amp. Most amps only have a limited amount of effects on them. So for example, your average Fender amp would maybe have a reverb and a tremolo on it. So that's going to make it kind of a wavy sound and that's going to give you kind of some reverb, some distance in the room. It wouldn't have a delay on it or multiple types of distortion or a phaser. For sure it doesn't have a phaser. This way you get to have your cake and eat it too. You could have different flavors of effects and your amp directly on board. The downside of this setup is live. You can't monitor as well. With an amp, it's really easy to monitor. You just turn the amp up or down. For the studio, a pedal board just gives me so much more control. And you honestly can't tell the difference. I can't. I don't use electric guitar that much. Maybe if you use electric guitar quite a bit, then you would want to get an amp. Like if, if your music is like metal or hard rock and it's like definitely based on a certain sound. But for like folky, kind of indie, kind of indie music vibe that I do, this is more than enough. Okay, I'm going to give you an idea of what kind of sounds you can get when you're using a pedal board. And I'm basically using my studio monitor speakers as my amp and using the pedal board to get the tones. So that's kind of a clean setting that I've got going on the Sans Amp GT2. Kind of my uh, dirty kind of sound I've got over here. Or I could have just the dirty sound. That cleans it up, actually. I got a phaser over here. <laughs> it's kind of goofy. I got uh, one boost. Let's turn that up. My boy messes with these settings sometimes. All right, 
and got a kind of a blues driver. Then this is a Voodoo Lab Sparkle Drive. It's kind of a clean boost. See how that's just a boost? That just kind of boosts my clean. And you could use these together, you know, and get some crazy sounds. With as many analog pedals to choose from, you can really get all kinds of tones that you would get on amps. And sometimes the subtleties of one tube amp versus this tube amp and vintage this and that, it just doesn't make as much of a difference in the sound as these do. You'll notice I have the reverb on all the time. Just add some space. Tremolo. I use this quite a bit, the memory man. Especially when you're doing leads, this can really add. You hear the boost, the, the kind of the delay I got. You can even do a chorus on that one, or vibrato, but I, I keep that part off. And the sonic stop is kind of like a compressor, it's kind of the functionality. See, it just kind of gives it some fatness with it on. So let's do a performance, let's dial in some sounds, and I'm just going to play some sustained notes. I don't want it to be too busy. I want to let the piano and the acoustic guitar breathe. Your song might be more electric guitar heavy driven and it might be busier, but for this particular song, we're just going to keep it, you know, with some strums and some basic things.
do it just to have fun. <laughs> Jimi Hendrix. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to check out the other videos in the tutorial series as I'm sure you'll get some value from them. Go ahead and subscribe if you like this content. My music's over on Spotify under Yusuf. It's all organized now and you can stream it. So next week, hand percussion and shakers and tambourines.